Hey everyone, Chris the Thrift Shop Hustler with another What Sold on eBay video for you tonight. It is actually a late night live What Sold on eBay video. Once again, I'm Chris the Thrift Shop Hustler. Definitely go down there and click the subscribe button anytime during this video. Definitely go down there and click the like button. That helps the algorithm say hello and all that fun stuff. And we're actually, this is a very special episode where we're going to go over the top high dollar things that we sold in March. So this is going to be everything from March 1st to March 31st, I do suppose. So we're going to go over the top 10 things that sold that were high dollar value items. So we're going to go over 10 items and we're going to go from the highest to the lowest. And I think the lowest uh, this month, as far as the top 10 was $150. And uh, we were kind of down for the month of March compared to February. So that's a little bit of a bummer. But we did have some pretty good sales that were higher end sales. So we're going to actually go through that right now. And of course, you know, when you go live is when the buzzers start buzzing and all that fun stuff. We got treasure hustlers in the house. What is up, treasure hustlers? Hope you're doing fine today. And definitely, if you're in the chat room, definitely start the conversation. If you have any questions, leave it in the chat. And if you're watching this on the back end, definitely leave a comment below if you have any questions. So let's get into the top 10 things that sold in March 2019 on eBay. Uh, first up, we have this half carat elegant diamond engagement ring princess cut this is actually a really great ring. We actually had this ring uh, in stock for maybe, a, I want to say maybe about two to three months before this actually sold. I think I had this as high as $1,600. And of course, you can see, why isn't this zooming in? It should actually be, a, there we go. There we go. As you can see, I was a pinky model for this ring. This ring was very small. Let me see actually what size this thing was. I think it was a six. Ah, that was a 4.5 size, which is like super small. I think out of the out of the whole office, this only fit on the ring finger of one lady. A 4.5 is a very small size, as we can see here, the half carat, and it is a princess cut. What is that nice square cut here for sure? And uh, this was 14 karat white gold. And for those that don't know, usually white gold, it, I don't think as far as the weight, it costs more money, but for some reason it's more in demand. I think white gold is just, it's just very popular right now uh, other than yellow gold. But anyways, let me look at the price that we did get. We did actually take a best offer. We had this listed for uh, just under $1,000. So we're actually going to see exactly the price that we got for this total and i've got my all my screens here messed up so yeah this sold for uh 650 dollars total with shipping included so this was the highest priced item that we sold in the month of march 2019 so we're doing uh pretty good as far as uh selling all the jewelry and things like that I, what i found over the course of the last four months is that sterling silver and gold stuff sells very fast. Um, usually it's gonna be underweight for scrap prices and things like that, but just under it, you know, it's gonna take something amazing for it to actually be worth a ton of money other than the, the price of the weight. And the diamond was very nice. And you know, there's, it's not uncommon for people to buy jewelry from us and then take everything apart like the diamond and then re, you know, make another uh, piece of jewelry with it. Uh, next up, we have this piece of art. This is uh, Federica uh, Ravi Ravaza. Jeez, I'm already starting with my speech impediment here. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, this was actually, I think this is the only, let me see here. I think this was actually the only piece of fine art that was sold. And uh, we uh, let me see exactly what we, well, actually, I want to show you the painting real quick. It is an oil painting. And... Uh, as you can see, there is the signature. Now, the signatures are usually pretty hard to determine sometimes with oil paintings. This is a R-A-V-I-Z-Z-A, -Z -Z -A, uh, Ravizia, Ravizia. And I uh, look this, uh, 
artist up and I think I actually might have put no I didn't this is what the back looks like the back actually looks uh, sort of old it's not very old as you know it's got um, staples and things like that when you see staples in the back of a painting uh, that's usually will tell you that it's a little newer but you know there's a lot of stuff that a, a back of a painting can tell you uh, but anyways I looked this I think I looked up this artist on art.com and a bunch of other uh, places that we uh, um, we do lots of research on art I do a lot of research on art personally with all the art stuff that um, I do and <laughs> the, the ladies here are making fun of my pinky Yes, I have a really small, I have a really small pinky. I have artist hands. And they have, they have definitely had their fair share of situations where the, my small hands, I guess you would say my hands are small, have definitely benefited the lives of other people. That's all I'm going to say. So let's get into this art. Also, so uh, actually, let me, let me uh, back up a little bit and see. Uh, da, 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 where how much exactly this sold for so this painting sold for four hundred and fifty seven dollars now that is including shipping and we go through a whole process of actually shipping artwork too we have special boxes for art and uh, you know there's also uh, you know some timely manner stuff that takes into shipping that so this sold for four hundred and fifty seven dollars total this was our second runner-up for highest priced item and this was the only art piece that we had in the top 10 for this month. Uh, next up we have this authentic Chanel designer 2012 resort cashmere cardigan sweater. This is actually a work of art. We talked about this in a few previous videos before when I did a what sold on eBay video. And as you can see here, this thing is just amazingly beautiful and, a, and just like a work of art. Look at the buttons themselves. Uh, the buttons themselves are amazing. This thing is like perfectly stitched. So if you ever want to, if you ever want to wonder what, how much a price or, or it's like you want to know if something's authentic. I mean, just look at how perfect the stitching is on this thing. And you can see how very well detailed all the stitching is, all the hardware. It looks amazing. Authentic stuff is not going to look so perfect. Um, usually when you deal with fakes and things like that, there's a lot of shortcuts that are taken to make it look like and feel like authentic but it's you can just tell by looking at something uh, close up you know the tags are probably one of the most number one things that are easy to fake um, as you can see here this could possibly look like a fake a fake tag it's very easily faked it's like a uh, silk and uh, but for the, for the whole thing you want to look at the stitching for anything and that that goes with uh, designer handbags that goes with shoes uh, look at the stitching if it looks imperfect in any way uh, you can potentially have a fake now it's not a, a bulletproof plan but what I do when I'm authenticating items such as clothing shoes or handbags is there's a look touch and feel um, kind of aspect that I that I look for and definitely I look at the stitching and that will tell you uh, a ton right there and if you ever have a feeling that something, you know, is off, then you should definitely take another look because usually you get that gut feeling uh, what stuff like that for sure. Uh, this sold for $436. That includes shipping. And I think we actually ship this in a medium priority box. We got Toy Attic is in the house. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, definitely. <laughs> so yeah so that is uh that one sold for 436 dollars and that was that one for sure and i got too many tabs up i'm already having a problem with getting into the next thing uh this is probably one of my favorite things that sold this month and there's actually a funny story that goes along with this um for those that don't know van briggle pottery is an amazing bolo brand let me just show you real quick what the um the hallmark looks like i don't know why there we go um usually the older ones will be scratched in like this and the van briggle is basically like that little house with a cross and a little pope hat i guess you would say and um a lot of these early on were made in colorado springs so you'll see van briggle is 
inscribed in the middle and then it'll say an abbreviation of Colorado Springs. So uh, if you're in Colorado and you're watching this, um, definitely go to garage sales and estate sales. You'll probably come across Van Briggle stuff every once in a while, but this is a very special piece. Um, I was visiting a local store and uh, they allowed me to go into their back room to go see if I can find any more things that we can put on eBay for their store. And there was a box full of knickknacks and this thing totally just jumped out at me. And uh, I'd never seen a Van Briggle pot in like, in, I don't want to say in real life, that sounds so stupid, but I'd never seen a Van Briggle pot in my hand. I've always seen pictures. I've always watched videos about Van Briggle. Uh, pottery, but I'd never seen one, but this thing was amazing. When I did research on it, I found out that this particular uh, style uh, Easter kind of bunny thing was actually a very in high demand. And there was a purple one that went for about four or $500 also. So um, I got really excited and what do you call it? I want to show you guys one thing is um, you'll see these little cracks in the varnish that's called crazing. And all, I don't want to say all, but most vintage pottery will have that if it has some sort of um, glazing on top of it. And that just happens over time. And that doesn't uh, usually affect the price a lot, but there are a lot of collectors that actually look for that. And there's also a lot of collectors that uh, look for the more perfect examples. But, um, you know, these things are pottery. They usually break over the years. And that's what makes these so rare is you know they only made a certain amount of uh particular styles over the years and so you know over time things break people move they chip they get damaged so finding like perfect pottery that's not chipped and everything that has very minimal crazing is very hard to to find but what i'm saying is uh you know definitely look out for van briggle uh, let me go again exactly tell you let me see here do, 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 do. oh treasure hustler is saying something about my tags yeah you know like i forgot to put tags in uh for sure we got krillin in the house uh, let me exactly show you what this went for so this fan briggle pot of a vase i should say went for 402 dollars so this was actually a really good find uh, this was something that was pulled out of a back room in a dusty old box. And uh, like I said, I saw it from a mile away. The thing almost like glimmered like Indiana Jones and uh, the Temple of Doom. The little shiny rocks that glow when you get them close together. This was definitely <laughs> something that was like that. We got Krillin in the house. Krillin is the OG, OG, OG. Uh, but thank you, Treasure Hustlers. Yeah, I didn't put any uh, channel tags for the video. That's usually I usually do all that stuff on the back end, for sure. So next up, we have this old Pawn Navajo Sterling Silver Leather Concho Belt. This is actually uh, 925 Silver, I think, or actually Sterling 925. And of course, it had turquoise in it. And there's a whole thing that could be said about turquoise. There's actually uh, very sought after turquoise. I think Bisbee turquoise is one of the most popular turquoise. And what I mean by Bisbee is I mean like turquoise is usually name, named after the mine that it comes out of. And sometimes they're, um, they describe what it is. So there's white turquoise. It's called white buffalo. The very um, sky bluey turquoise. It's called Cinderella. It comes out of the Cinderella mind. Uh, Big, I think it's, yeah, I think it's Big, Bigsby. No, that's not Bigsby. It's Big, I can't even say it. Uh, I think it's Bigsby is uh, one of the most popular one. I think there's a Kingman mind. There's actually a map if you Google it. I think it's like a lot of that stuff is in Nevada and Arizona. And you can actually see where the different mines are. And a lot of those mines are closed down, which, you know, has bumped up the price for some of the particular turquoise but anyways I, I went on a round about turquoise i apologize for that uh, but anyways uh this belt was something that was uh, that came in it was uh, pretty much pure silver for all these things and this this stuff can be found every once in a while a lot of people know about sterling silver and kind of uh american indian art and, and belts and things like that so finding this kind of stuff at a garage sale or a thrift stop 
Thor is going to be few and far between. Though people still find, you know, nice treasures every once in a while. But we live in a day and age where everyone's got a cell phone. Everyone knows, you know, a lot of the particular things. You know, maybe like 20 years ago, you can find a lot of this kind of stuff at Goodwills and garage sales and stuff like that. For, you know, for one thing, silver wasn't worth a lot. Um, I think in the 90s, it kind of spiked up, like I want to say maybe about 10 years ago, and then it's kind of calmed back down. Um, so, you know, you were able to find a lot of these kind of things. But anyways, let's see what price we got for this. Uh, this leather concho belt sold for $334. We took a best offer on that. So that includes shipping with that. This was a, this was a very nice sale uh, from Eureka. Eureka's killing it this month for sure. It's actually really great. I'm doing see here next up we have this vintage washburn ukulele um we came across this ukulele and it was listed again from eureka eureka actually had a good month uh coming up with some nice treasures that came through that town uh, let's see here there's actually a pretty funny story that goes with eureka but that's just i apologize that's insider that's insider talk right there if you know about Eureka, if you're from Eureka, you kind of can understand what I'm saying. Uh, but anyways, uh, this was amazing ukulele. It was kind of an older one now. This is a model 1915. I'm not sure exactly what year this was made. And uh, um, as a matter of fact, you know, once the seller or the buyer got this, they were concerned about there were some cracks that weren't described on this. But they still they still accepted it. They just wanted to let us know. So if you if you're selling a ukulele or anything like that just make sure you're looking for any stress cracks that are around uh, the opening here or on the face and especially on the back the neck and you want to kind of you know use all 12 photos if you can and just specify any conditions on ukuleles I'm not really an expert on musical uh, um, instruments though I know we've sold crazy high-end trumpets before for like twelve hundred dollars so look out for trumpets for sure Bisbee, that's what it is. Bisbee, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I got my all my turquoise mines all mixed up. Bisbee seems to be the very high, higher end, like the the cream of the creme, the creme of the cream when it comes to tur turquoise, and it kind of has like a chocolatey matrix. And God, I, I I've studied uh, turquoise a lot this year, and and so matrix is basically like the the black cracks I would I guess you would say that are inside uh, it's like pieces of quartz or you know other minerals that are tied in with the turquoise it's called a matrix and Bisbee is known for the chocolatey matrix which is like a very dark brown uh, against a very kind of darker turquoise and for those that are into turquoise I hate to even go on a rant about turquoise again but usually the darker blue is the most expensive kind you can look for so uh but don't don't be fooled there's lots of plastic turquoise there's uh turquoise that is set with resin where they pour resin on the rocks and then they sand it and they make it look like uh, it's darker or anything there's a lot of kind of crazy stuff when it comes to turquoise so don't just take uh, turquoise as face value but anyways let's go over back to this ukulele uh, this ukulele sold for $325, and that includes shipping with that. So this is a really great sale. Uh, oh, Krillin's going to love this one. We got a Laurel Piana Baby Cashmere size 48 gray cardigan sweater. We had this listed for $399. This was a part of a huge uh, collection. Now, actually, we sent a lot of stuff up to um, the Real Real, and... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make a video on that at some point, but we've sold thousands of dollars worth of clothing so far with Real Real this month, or last month, I should say, and it's uh, it's been it's been very good for us. And uh, actually, I'll probably actually probably I probably won't make any videos about that whole situation. But this is one of the ones that I pulled to for eBay before we sent a big batch of stuff to Real, a uh, Real Real, and. Uh, uh, Laurel Piana Baby Cashmere does very well for us, um, as you can see here. And a huge shout-out to Toy Attic, who's who's probably in the chat still. Remember we talked about hanging 
uh, photos. So this is the tight photo where we got a clip in the back that kind of shows form. And we got the hanging look right here. So huge shout out to Toy Attic that said, you know, women want to see, you know, what it's going to look like hanging compared to like visually stunning. You know, like I like, I'm like an old photographer. I used to do uh, photo stuff back in the day. And, you know, for me, it's like a visual thing. And, and so, you know, it was nice to get a female perspective on photography and what women want to see. So a huge shout out to Toy Attic for that, for sure. If she's still in the chat right here. Uh, how much did this sell for? Let's see here. This Loro Piana sold for $311. So that shows you what uh, the Loro Piana baby cashmere line can pull, especially a mint condition one. That's uh, These neutral earth tones seem to be very popular um, with uh, customers. So like the earth tones do very well. The funkier colors like reds and yellows and weird stuff like that still demands good cash but the earth tones i i find uh, especially during like fall and winter seem to do very well so this was a very good sale and i'm glad that i pulled uh, these ones to the side and it was a really really good sale for sure <laughs> toy Attic says working on listing while watching i appreciate that i gotta get some listing done i actually went to a goodwill yesterday and uh, found some some pretty good stuff and usually I can find value at a goodwill uh, but I'll look at the whole store like I'll go through the whole store except for women's clothes and pants and stuff like that and jackets I really don't go thumbing through that but I'll go through the rest of everything uh, next up we have these Gucci highball cocktail barware these are vintage from I want to say anywhere between the 40s and the 60s these came out maybe Krillin will know like an exact year for these it might be even 50s um, but anyways, this was a nice set. I, I did a video, an ingest video, when we pulled these from. Where did these come from? I think these came from Nor the Northridge shop. And I remember pulling these out thinking, like, what the hell are these? These are these are like nothing. And to find out that they were just old Gucci logos. So that's they're so old. Uh, they're literally like 60 years old, if not more. And that's why they kind of look a little funny. They look a little off because they're old and the and the logos change and all that kind of stuff over the years. Uh, but anyways, these are glasses. I think they probably stood about eight to nine inches tall. They had these like silvery bottoms to them. And you can see uh, Gucci Italy is stamped on the bottom. Uh, they were they weren't perfect. I mean, there was no cracks or chips, and that's important when it comes to glass. But the silver uh, has tarnished over the years and i think it might have been silver plate i'm not completely sure but definitely look out for this stuff if you ever see this stuff um out there and about you know just to kind of you know to look for that kind of weird older gucci logo for sure uh, we sold this set of four for 258 dollars that includes shipping and this shipped very nicely in a large uh flat rate box and of course we bubbled it with peanuts and I've talked about this before about you know when you're shipping glass to definitely uh, use packing peanuts when shipping glass I don't like packing peanuts but I'll use uh, packing peanuts for glass to put on the top and the bottom so that there's some give if there's any shaking when you do the shake test you don't want anything rattling around but the peanuts will help cushion the glass in case it's dropped there's all this kind of stuff and we have talked about this before I don't want to bore you with with that uh, the next item is actually this is really cool we actually had four star trek model kits that came in um, i want to say sometime last month and they were regular model kits we sold uh probably two of the four sold right away and this one was a very special one as it was a phaser that was a, a garage kit and as you can see here this is what it looks like inside it was kind of like a uh a resin body and it was a limited edition of 2800 and when I first saw this it was very small and I thought like something like this is very cool because it was a limited edition model kit and um, I've seen similar ones sell for you know around $200 and this was the only one that was still listed one sold before for about $200 so I listed this one at $400 just to see if it, we can actually get that because I always like to to put to do uh, high prices 
for different for different stuff. Um, and we do that for that. Oh, and really quick, Krillin's asking peanuts versus uh, bubble wrap. Both you bubble wrap the individual glasses, and then you and then you tape them together. And what that does is adds cushion in between everything so that they don't bang. You don't want glass banging against glass ever. And then you and then you uh, immerse the those glasses that are flat, all lined up together, taped together, with peanuts around it so that there's cushion and everything. It's there's I should probably do a video on that. It's like it's actually pretty. Uh, it's a com it's pretty common sense. Uh, Toy Addict says she's coming to uh, SoCal next week. Yeah, if you're in town. If you're in Burbank, definitely come check out the American Cancer Society. If you need the address, you can get a hold of me uh, somehow. Just look up Burbank Discovery Shop. Anyways, this model kit, it was pretty much brand new. Um, of course, it was an open box. It had a COA and everything. Um, and let me see what price we actually got for this. Uh, we got $213 for this particular model kit which was amazing and especially it was so small it shipped like really easily in a small box i think we actually probably shipped this uh yeah as we can see here we charged 19.99 so this probably shipped in a large um flat rate box but you know it was something that was very small could have probably shipped in a medium uh one of the square the, the, squ the square board game ones uh, next up, we have this red marbleized Bakelite poker chips again from Eureka. Eureka is really was really doing amazing this this month. Uh, these are Bakelite poker chips. Uh, only two photos, even. I uh, probably would have done a couple more photos. This wasn't one of my auctions. Um, I think it's uh, fuck. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to say the name because I'll probably get it wrong. But Eureka was doing an amazing job. And these are old vintage poker chips. And we took a best offer. Uh, for these, these sold for $159. Now, there was actually a whole bunch of other things that sold over $100, between $100 and $150, but I didn't want to add these. I just wanted to do the top 10 uh, things that sold for high dollar value. And so uh, let me know in the comments below what your favorite thing was. And definitely click the like button if you enjoyed this show. I really appreciate your support. Uh, we had a pretty good month. I'm hoping to actually do better this month. We were a little down uh, from sales from February. Uh, March was down, uh, I want to say like 30 something percent. So we're going to try to do our best this month to bump up those prices or those totals for sure. Uh, once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. I appreciate you tuning in. I hope everyone has a good night. It's very late here in Southern California. It's almost 10 o'clock, so that means it's almost 1 o'clock on the East Coast. So uh, all my East Coasters out there, uh, Krillin, Toy Attic, Treasure Hustlers, I think you're in California. I appreciate everyone stopping by and saying hello, and we'll see you next time. Take